Hello, everybody. This is Kuda Biza, co-founder and chief marketing officer of Nonbelievable. Thank you so much for joining our Facebook Live. I am here and I'm ready and I have my jar of cookies right here with me about to dive in and have a delicious Nonbelievable cookie. Today, I have a special guest for you guys, one that I admire and adore for all the amazing work he's doing uh, with New York City Relief. And it's Josiah Hacken. Um, he's the Vice President of Outreach at New York City Relief. And today we're going to talk about how New York City Relief is spreading love in the Big Apple and beyond. So I hope you guys uh, get to enjoy and you get to learn all of the amazing work that Josiah and his team are doing during this very, very challenging time with COVID. They're still out there and and you know spreading love to to those in need and and to people who are struggling with homelessness in new york city so josiah how you doing man what is up brother what is up long time no see man um i hope that uh, everything is going well and uh, you're staying safe given everything that's going on with covid we are we're doing our best i mean we're we're, we're continuing to show up uh because you know the, the the homeless can't stay home, so neither do we. That's that's amazing. I can imagine how challenging it has been. You know, you know, in March, right when you know things started getting into lockdown and all these protocols are are, are, are being set in place. How how did you guys handle it when when all of this happened? It was. I've been doing this work at New York City Relief, uh, you know, serving our, our brothers and sisters who are experiencing homelessness for over 10 years now. And I can tell you that in March uh, was one of the most challenging uh, things that I've, I've ever dealt with. Um, and I, you know, that's just from the side of the person serving. I can't just imagine what the people being served uh, went through. Um, because in March, when COVID hit, the city locked down. New York City just shut down. Um, a lot of uh, the, the subways ended up getting shut down in the evening from one to five. Uh, and as we know, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people considered the subway uh, a place to sleep overnight, uh, and immediately they got pushed up uh, above ground. Um, the the risk of of contracting COVID um, became a very uh, ever present reality within congregate shelters, uh, where you have lots of people sleeping indoors in in confined spaces. Um, and so a lot of folks who uh, maybe would have gone into shelter left or, or wouldn't go in because they were afraid of, of contracting COVID and because they had you know, pre-existing conditions. We, even just getting a cup of coffee and sitting in McDonald's. I know how many of us in New York uh, have gone into a Starbucks and seen somebody uh, you know, who's down on their luck sitting in, in the corner just getting warm or just chilling out and just you know, taking a nap. Um, that became impossible. So all the people that uh, you know were kind of in the nooks and crannies uh, of our society got pushed into the street. And then to make things worse, a lot of programs that serve food um, to men and women who are experiencing homelessness shut down. Uh, between March and April, over one third of the food pantries and soup kitchens in New York closed. And so our lines just exploded. Um, we we became you know one of the only one of the few. Uh, organizations that continued to serve uh, a hot meal uh, in New York through the months of March and April, and, and we continued to, to go out there. But it was, man, it, I've never seen desperation um, like that just for simple things like food or a place to sit um, like I've seen in, in America. I, I've never seen that in America um, like, I, like I did in March. So you were talking about long lines, and you're right. And let me just show the viewers a clip of some of the lines that um, you know these guys witness on a day base on a day to day basis. So. <laughs> that line was like wrapped around the park going to the relief bus, you, you, right? You want to know my proudest? So, okay, this just shows you what a dork I am, right? But I, I see that line and all I can think of how, as how proud I am of the guests that we're serving, main, maintaining six feet 
I know. I know. I have no idea how much effort it took. Like I literally drew out chalk lines. We got like these, you know, like my kids. I like went to I I like rummaged through my kids' garage toys and found chalk. And I like went out to the street and I'd like walked. I have a size 12 shoe. So I marked out six steps and drew a line <laughs> for like three blocks. I did that. So the fact that those folks were maintaining six feet in that perfect way, I am just so proud of them. And I'm so proud of the fact that we were able to serve hundreds and hundreds of people. But to the point, that line literally wrapped three blocks long um, just just for a cup of soup, a pair of socks, uh, a, you know, a, a, a friendly, uh, you know, a friendly smile behind behind the mask, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, wild. Wow. So for, for those of you who are just joining us, um, I'm here talking with Josiah Haken, Haken uh, from New York City Relief, one of our impact partners here at Unbelievable. So as you know, for every cookie that we sell, we donate a meal to someone in need. And New York City Relief is one of the partners that um, we work with to, to, to make this impact. So Josiah, do you want to talk a little bit about what New York City Relief is? What do you guys do? When were you started? for those people who are starting to learn about your organization and, and just want to get a sense of the work that you guys do. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. First of all, the, the amazing thing is Unbelievable Cookies are without question my favorite. It's just unbelievable to partner with such an amazing organization. Um, and so New York City Relief, uh, we, we are a mobile outreach program uh, to men and women who are experiencing homelessness in New York City and New Jersey. And what we do is we provide a, a hot, fresh, uh, really high quality meal through uh, a vegan vegetable soup um, that we cook fresh every day. Uh, we get bread, Portuguese rolls uh, from Teixeira's Bakery in Newark every day um, delivered to us. And we also get snacks that we give out. And that's where, you know, having the partnership with Unbelievable has been amazing also because not only are they helping supply the meals that we're providing, but they're also helping us by providing cookies that our guests can enjoy uh, on a regular basis. And it really gives them a, a way, a, you know, something to look forward to and something to smile at. And, and as an organization for 30 years, what we've been doing is we've been going to places in New York City and New Jersey um, where we know that there is a high volume of men and women who are experiencing homelessness. And, and what we try to do is we try to cultivate an experience for our guests that is safe, that is welcoming, that is loving. And then we we meet felt needs like food, like through a meal and through new socks and and through um, you know other emergency supplies that we give away. Um, but we and we leverage those felt needs to build relationships with our guests. And then we have trained staff on site to try to help almost function as navigators. Um, to help our guests navigate the bureaucracy and the process of getting access to SNAP benefits and Medicaid and access to shelter and housing. Because the truth is, is that there's a lot of folks in the street who are just surviving. Um, They're surviving day to day, and they may not have the bandwidth or the ability to do the research to understand where they can go to get themselves out of the, the predicament they're in. So for us, everything starts with a meal. Everything starts with a delicious meal, um, which is where, again, where we just the partnership has been so natural with uh, and unbelievable as they, you know, have helped supply those meals for our guests. Um, so then we can then leverage those meals uh, to to help connect uh, our guests to to resources that will hopefully save their lives, um, because we understand that homelessness. I mean, the national life expectancy—the expect life expectancy for someone who is homeless—is about twenty to thirty years less than the national average. So we are wow. talking about a life and death situation. Situation. Yeah, that's true. It's a big deal. Yeah, you're getting some shout outs on on Facebook. Uh, Brian Janesco is saying we love your energy. So so it's super cool, man. So so thank you so much for for sharing the the energy. And Brian, thank you so much for your comment. Um, we're also seeing. Uh, Manuela, what an incredible cause. Thank you for all you do for those in need. So it's really good that uh, people are already responding and, and giving shout outs to, to what you guys are doing. So <clears throat> walk me through uh, something real quick. Like how many people do you typically serve in a day? So perhaps you might want to break it down between pre-COVID and now. Yeah. Like, you know, how many people do you serve and across what, you know, area, right? I know it's New York City Relief, so is it just in New York or you go beyond New York? 
Yeah, it's a great question. So we go, um, we, we, we aren't, we, Originally, we started out doing outreach in New York, and that's why the name New York City Relief became because we were sort of exclusively in New York and Manhattan. Um, but over the years, we've expanded. And so now we do um, eight outreaches a week. So every week, we will do eight outreach events. Um, in mid we're, we're in lower Manhattan. We're at uh, 20. That, that shot that you saw of the line was at, in Chelsea in uh, Manhattan. Um, and then we're also in 14th Street on the Lower East Side. Um, and then we're also up in Harlem and we're in the South Bronx. So we haven't actually been able to expand into Brooklyn and Queens uh, yet, uh, but we are hoping, we know the need is, is huge uh, in, in those boroughs as well. So we have eyes on, on expansion into those spaces. We also do outreach in Newark, New Jersey. Newark is uh, in Essex County in New Jersey. There's actually, they actually have about 25% of the entire homeless population in all of New Jersey. Um, so there's a lot of need there. Um, and then we also go into Patterson, New Jersey. Patterson, New Jersey um, is a city that was once a, a bustling, uh, you know, thriving city. Um, and now they're trying to trying to come back, but it's a struggle. I mean, it's a really tough, it's a tough, uh, tough uh, environment. Um, but beautiful, again, beautiful people, beautiful, uh, amazing people that we, we get to, to get to uh, engage with on a daily basis. Um, before COVID, we were, you know, we would probably serve around 100 people, 150 people per outreach. Um, so we would end up serving probably about 1,000 people a week, uh, give or take. Um, again, now that all fluctuates depending on weather, we, uh, depending on uh, what people have access to in terms of emergency funding through Social Security or whatever. So uh, there's a lot of variables that affect our numbers. But we were averaging probably 1,000 to 1,500 people a week. Um, and then COVID hit and our numbers uh, almost quadrupled. Uh, we, we basically started seeing, um, you know, th where we had one outreach, we might see 100, 150 people. We started seeing 250, 300, 350 uh, people that were coming by. And we also saw them in a more condensed time frame. So because of COVID, um, I mean, we understand intrinsically that uh, COVID is, is, is a more dangerous disease for people who have health issues, people who are um, you know, struggling, they have breathing problems or they have heart issues, uh, diabetes. And we also understand that homeless folks generally have a, a higher percentage of all of those things. So the people we're serving are, are, are more vulnerable to, to the virus than, than, you know, people who are housed, generally speaking. So we condensed our outreach to a shorter period of time because we didn't want to expose our guests for longer than necessary. We wanted to continue to serve, but we were worried actually of giving them uh, the virus or, or, or get infecting them. Whereas for me, I might, you know, I'm younger, I'm housed, I have health insurance, I'm more likely to kind of survive COVID. But um, if I was a, you know, a, a asymptomatic spreader, I could end up hurting somebody who was in the street and didn't have access to those things. So we were super aware that we wanted to be very careful about that. Um, but our numbers, again, in a shorter period of time, doubled. <laughs> so in half the time, we saw twice as many people. Um, and then, and over time, we've seen our numbers continue to, so like after COVID, it, our numbers spiked. And then they sort of plateaued in June uh, when a lot of organizations uh, started to sort of come back online. Um, so the, the city responded by providing school meals for people uh, who could just come into uh, any of the schools and get a meal, which I think really helped. And so our numbers sort of dipped. But then in September, um, unfortunately, our numbers have spiked again. Um, so in, in what we're, we're seeing in, in, in September, our numbers are already ticking upwards, which is not good. And I think you're muted. I can't I can't hear you. There you go. One of the things I like about uh, New York City Relief is that you guys just go beyond providing meals, right? You actually uh, want to learn about how you can support uh, your guests um, with other services. And I'm going to show a quick clip of how you actually interview the guests to get to learn more about them, understand their needs so that you can serve them better. So check this out. So as you can see, you know, uh, a homeless guest is with one of the team members uh, from Josiah's team. So can you just explain what's going on there and what are the services do you provide beyond just the meals uh, to, to our homeless guests? 
Yeah, it's it, this is so important, so important. Um, so what what we realized even during COVID um, is that we wanted to figure out what what was shifting in the landscape of homeless services, and we needed to find out which uh, what needs were the greatest, what was the most urgent and pressing need that people have. Um, and just to give you a little bit of backdrop, and I hope this won't take too long, but. I had this uh, epiphany um, a couple of years ago. It's probably six or seven years ago. I was doing a workshop, um, and I, I, my daughter at the time was about two or three years old. And it occurred to me as I was thinking about this, like what we do and how we do it, and um, it occurred to me that someday, if my daughter uh, experienced some sort of tragedy in her life, some sort of trauma, and ended up in the street, like what would happen? Again, God forbid. Uh, but if my daughter ended up in the street, and what if, if she walked up to? the New York City Relief Outreach. Say she ends up wandering by and she sees the relief bus uh, and she's hungry uh, and she's tired and she goes up to the bus. As, as her father, what would I hope for that organization to offer her in that moment? And, and, and honestly, while I would want and, and really pray that they would, she would get access to a meal, access to a felt need, what I would really want is I would want someone um, to show interest in her situation and give her the chance to just express what her needs are so that we can just say, listen, is, is there any other service that we can connect you to? Um, and so for us as an organization, we really believe that the meal, as important as it is to feed people, we also need to give people the chance, we need to give them the opportunity to express what their deeper needs are, what their situation is. So that's why we developed this survey. What you saw in that video was, one of our, our, our part-time staff members who was actually doing a quick survey with our guests, just saying, hey, is there any other need that you have, any other services that we can connect you to? Um, and again, it's all voluntary. So like the guests can just say, no, I'm good, or no, don't want to talk to you. And it's again, nothing required. We don't require them to say anything. Um, because going back to the scenario about if it's my daughter, um, she, has, she would have free will. I would want an organization to honor her, uh, her autonomy. Um, but at the same time, I want them to make sure she's aware that this is a place where she can get help. So for us as an organization, we are everything we do is about creating those touch points where guests who come through are at least given the opportunity to ask, I need help with a job. I need help with housing. I need help with seeing a psychiatrist. Man, in March, you have no idea how many people I spoke with who lost connection with their psychiatrist. Uh, because they, the offices closed down, they were only doing virtual appointments. They only had like their Medicaid offices all went virtual. So like even just asking like, hey, have you have you seen your psychiatrist? Like if, if someone says like, I need help seeing a psychiatrist. There was one woman I met who we ended up getting one of our social workers ended up getting on a call with her and her psychiatrist just to make the connection so that she could get an appointment. Um, and we walked her through the process of what she needed and how we could help her, um, you know, manage her medication because she was getting her meds on the street because she had lost touch with her psychiatrist. So just the matter of building a framework where we offer a meal, we offer felt needs, but we're very intentional about asking the question to everybody, is there something else we can connect you to? Um, and so that's what you see there in that, in that clip. So thank you for sharing that. It's, it's super important. And for us as an organization, right, our vision for Nonbelievable is to go beyond just providing the meals, right? Because we have the mindset of we need to not only just provide the fish, right, but we need to teach a man how to fish. So to be able to work with an organization like New York City Relief that is actually thinking about how they can get people from being homeless to finding the help that they need and, and becoming self-sufficient, that's a huge plus. So for us, it was something that was like, you know what, we really need to work with this organization. And I remember the first time you came to the office and we connected and uh, we had some cookies, um, it, it was super awesome. So I'm gonna switch it up right now and I'm gonna do a quick uh, rapid fire question uh, Q&A for you, okay? Right. So you just have to say, you know, one answer. You know what rapid fire is all about, right? We're gonna buzzer. Bzz. You know, it's just so I'll, I'll give you two options or maybe three, and then you have to pick one. All right. Okay. So if you had a choice to pick between chocolate chip and oatmeal raisin, which cookie would you go with? Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. All right, cool. If you had the option to go with 
Um, peanut butter or double chocolate, which one would you go with? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Great, great. Those are good choices. Those are good choices. So I was really excited um, for the gala, right? So in January, you told me that you guys were going to have a gala. I think it was in May. Yeah. I, I went and I looked for my tuxedo. Everything was all set. And then COVID hit. Yep. And the first thing I said was like, oh, man, I, I'm not going to get to dress up and look nice and whatnot. But I was like, oh, wow, you know, this is the biggest fundraising effort for New York City Relief. Um, so it's really obviously hurt your budget, obviously not being able to, to, to have a gala. But I do know that right now you have um, a matching gift uh, campaign for the month. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that is? Yeah, thank you. So yeah, the gala just now you may you may be able to tell just by looking at me. Maybe some of your you know the audience can tell. I'm not really the gala type. You know, maybe it's just obvious. I well, I, I have one suit and I use it once a year, and it's for the gala. <laughs> so um, so dressing up was not the the concern for me when we had to cancel our gala. For me, it was about funding our organization uh, because we normally raise around five hundred thousand dollars. Uh, at our gala, it's the biggest event of the year for us. Um, and as a nonprofit, you know, we 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 survive. We pay our staff. We pay, you know, pay for the the buses that we we drive, the gas, the uh, the materials we give away. Um, everything is is through donations. So what we're doing right now is we had a very generous uh, donor uh, who wanted to help us, and um, what they said was, we will match. Uh, up to $25,000 uh, of donations that come in and we, we'll match it. So we did that. And in, in about three weeks, we blew right up to the $25,000 mark. And we were like, wow, that was amazing. Incredible generosity. Um, now, candidly, our budget annually is a little over $3 million. So $25,000 $25, is amazing. Um, but, it, you know, what, what the expression, you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? We had to. So another donor came forward and said, hey, I want to match an additional $25,000. So now we have a, a special opportunity where um, through the next couple, I believe it's the 15th of November, um, every dollar that's donated through our match campaign will be matched by a, a, an additional donor. Um, so that means that whatever we raise, whatever you give now on this, this link will be doubled. Um, so it's really exciting for us because we actually took uh, a $25,000 match opportunity and we've, through generosity of, of people giving $5, giving $10, giving hundreds of dollars, have managed to turn this actually into hopefully will be $100,000 for our organization. So um, if anyone's interested in, in doubling their impact and, and want to support the work we're doing, just go to the, you know, the link and um, you can follow that, that cue and it would make a huge difference. Like I said, because over uh, we're about $4,000 short, I think, right now. Uh, of our goal of of, of fifty thousand dollars to be matched. Wow, um, you're you're super close, and and I hope you can make it. It's it's like the elections, right? We're super close in in finishing the count, but you know we'll see when it will end. Yeah. But anyway, um, I hope people can can join. The link is right now in the ticker below, and I've also put it in the description. So feel free to go and support and just, just move as your heart tells you to move. It'll be super great to, to support our impact partner, New York City Relief. Now, on Valentine's Day, right, the day for love, I'm going to show you guys what I got to do on Valentine's Day. So check out this video. It's super cool. Hello, I'm Peter Biza, co-founder and chief marketing officer for Non-Believable. Today is Valentine's Day, and we've decided to partner up with New York City Relief to feed some homeless people at the Salvation Army headquarters in New York City. In America, there's a huge hunger crisis. More than 40 million people are food insecure. So what we've decided to do as a brand is to come and help end hunger in a delicious way with our cookies. Nonbelievable is a mission-based baked goods company for every box of cookies that we sell, we donate meals. Our goal is to donate 1 million meals by the end of 2022. It's part of our DNA as a brand to actually be you know, on the front lines in impacting uh, the people that we serve. 
as a cookie company, we believe that we're more than just you know, a transactional relationship. We actually want to invest our time in loving, in serving these people. And we've started to open up the doors for our customers to join us. Customers who are supporting the mission not only get to do that through their purchase, but they can also do that by coming and really connecting and impacting uh, the people that we serve. Wow, like when I ever, when, whenever I watch that video, it just reminds me of that day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, it was really the first time coming and serving with New York City Relief and meeting the people that you impact. And it, it really reaffirmed all the reasons why I decided to leave a big corporate job to come and work on Unbelievable because, you know, we're really making a difference. And when you sit down and you connect and you talk to these people and you hear their stories, these are real people, you know, and, you know, it can happen to anyone. So some, some of these folks um, were just like, you know, us, right? They, they were living life, everything was good. And then a couple of unfortunate uh, events happen and now they're on the streets and they're homeless and, and, and they're looking for food. So for me, it was really a, a life changing uh, experience. Uh, when I got to spend Valentine's Day um, with New York City Relief, it was cold that day. I remember that day, it was so windy, but it, it was worth it because um, it, it really reaffirmed what we're doing as a brand. And uh, one of the things that we're gonna be doing once COVID is, is over and things you know go back to normal, is we really wanna bring our customers to volunteer with us. Um, we've had a couple of customers actually do it before the lockdown and some have actually braved it out to mm -hmm. go during uh, lockdown. And we even had an influencer last week, uh, you know, Alison Mahoney, the singing baker, she went out and she, she spent the day volunteering with New York City Relief and she's been helping us with our Amazon Live experiences. Uh, but we, we wanna do that so, so that for, for the customers, you know, you get to really see the impact that you're making because you are the ones who are making the impact possible when you buy the cookies. So, um, you know, I really encourage you guys, once we have everything open up, if you're in the New York, New Jersey area, and if you can make it to, to really just join us, I think volunteering right now is one of your biggest needs, right, Josiah? Yeah, if it, right now, again, we, we're continuing to, to serve, um, but we definitely need, we need help. We need volunteers. Um, but again, we want to be wise. We want to be so we're we are uh, asking that if you are going to volunteer, that you are um, healthy, uh, that you're younger, because uh, we know that this again that that, that COVID nineteen dispar disproportionately gets worse as you get older. Um, and we also want to to make sure that you are safe and that uh, so we we provide uh, KN ninety five masks for uh, all of our volunteers. We take temperatures uh, of our volunteers and our staff in the morning before we start. Um, and we, you know, are going to have people sign off on a waiver for, you know, the form that, that just, just a brief health check, uh, thing, because again, we want to make sure that we're, we're be, being safe. So, but if you're healthy, uh, if you have time, um, and you're willing to, to come out and you're willing to, uh, to, to be in, in a position of service right now during this crisis, um, we would love to love to have you. And you can easily find more information about how to do that, uh, on our website. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I highly encourage anybody to um, to to definitely go and volunteer um, if you can. I think I think you'll enjoy it, and it's a good way for you to just spread love. Now, what are the other ways that uh, people can help, Josiah? We spoke about the giving uh, match that you have right now, and volunteering. Are there other ways that people can can help New York City Relief? Well, one way is to just keep buying unbelievable cookies. That's that's a that's a definitely a great way uh, to. I like that answer. I'm telling you, I'm I'm just not just going to be honest with you. Just keep buying unbelievable cookies. That's helpful. Um, I would also say that um, one thing that you can do is, I mean, giving financial support is a is definitely is probably the best way uh, right now because it allows us the flexibility of putting those financial resources where we need them in a flexible way. Um, at the same time. Uh, we do have some um, some clothing drive needs, like for the winter. Uh, if some the, we, again, we have some kind of specific needs, like in terms of like winter uh, outerwear um, that's really high quality, uh, and and specifically, even we 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 tell people that we prefer men's uh, stuff because it's um, 
it, it's 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 super you know the majority of the people we serve even if like a woman can you generally speaking on the street wear a men's coat uh but when we get women's coats it's it's hard sometimes for us to find uh the right person for it so um if someone if you are sitting on um you know uh access to winter winter outerwear uh, that would be um, that's really again high quality the other thing that we try to stress is we really want to offer dignity to our guests um, we don't want to give them stuff that's like damaged or dirty uh, the last thing we want to do is um, is you know the last thing you want to do is kick someone while they're down and a lot of times people uh, without realizing it sometimes by offering something that's you know damaged or dirty they, they can actually in, add insult to injury. Um, to somebody who's who's stress who's who's having a really hard time. So, um, but winter gloves. Uh, if someone wants to, you know, has really again high quality winter gloves that are warm. Just uh, the reality is, right now with people in the street um, and winter coming, uh, it's it's a real challenge to stay to stay safe um, to because of the combination of COVID nineteen and the weather. Uh, it really is a, a difficult time. So. Uh, winter winter gear is is really appreciated as well. And then I would say uh, the last thing I would say is just creatively, um, if anyone has uh, specific skill sets or they have uh, you know or they want to they want to do workshops on on how to address homelessness or they want to like spread the word about the work that we're doing uh, in creative ways, um, we are open to having those conversations. So uh, someone can easily find me on social media or go to our website uh, to reach out to us because we're. You know, we're creative. We have to find creative ways to to stay to stay in business, um, especially now that COVID. You know, again, we're living in a whole new world, uh, so we're re we're like reconfiguring everything. So any any creativity is uh, is a good thing. Great. So <clears throat> there's a question that actually came in our Instagram. So I'm actually in our Instagram. They they saw the ad of you and me, Josiah, and they sent us uh, a note. So it says. And it's from Tiffany Renee, that's her name. She says, hi, I'm a school administrator uh, for New York City uh, Department of Education, working with students living in temporary housing and families experiencing homelessness. Mm. I'm very interested in learning about your organization and how I can receive goods for my families in need, if at all possible. So. I think Tiffany is trying to understand, do you support people in these types of situations? And if so, how can they receive help from New York City Relief? It's a, it's a great question. And, and Tiffany, uh, thank you so much for what for what you're doing. Uh, yeah, the, the, this is this is impacting so many people. I mean, I know right, right now there's probably about 50, I think there's like 58,000 uh, homeless uh, folks in the New York City shelter system, but 20,000 plus are kids. Um, so the reality is that there's lots of homeless kids out there who are uh, struggling, especially during with virtual learning and it's just, and everything, it's just been a mess. So sorry, but that's just want to acknowledge the work that you're doing and, and the compassion you're showing. Um, we, we primarily serve, um, again, we have a very specific niche that we kind of offer and we fill in terms of connection. And, um, but I will say that if you have uh, families um, that you have specific needs for, um, we would be happy uh, to help in any way we can to get them access to um, emergency supplies. Uh, what I would suggest is reaching out to us via email. Um, we can, you can go info at newyorkcityrelief.org um, or you can reach out to us via social media um, through a Facebook message uh, to, our, to our page um, and to, with specific needs that you may have for your students. Um, we, we generally, again, we do felt needs, like for, for example, we have um, new socks that we always offer, uh, toiletry items that we can give, um, and we have connections to other services and other resources in New York City and the surrounding area um, to help connect people to resources. So if you have a family where you know, they're kind of in crisis or they're, um, they're, they're maybe not getting the case management that they need uh, and they would like an advocate, they would like someone uh, to just sort of advocate on their behalf, uh, we would be happy if you wanted to reach out to us um, if we can kind of play the role of the advocate or a, sort of a third party uh, to, to help facilitate progress with somebody in a specific situation, um, that's something we can definitely do. Um, we're not we're not a huge organization. Um, we have about 30 full-time staff total. Um, so obviously with the, the size of the need and the scope of the need, we're, we're not a DHS provider. We're not part of the Department of Homeless Services. 
Um, we are a private uh, NG, a nonprofit organization, um, but we want to help in any way we can. So don't hesitate to reach out. And if we can, even if we can broker a connection, we'd be happy to. Uh, that's why we're here. So don't hesitate to reach out. And and thank you for thank you for your question. And thank you for the work that you're doing. All right. Well, what 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 the time is up, and uh, it was really oh, yeah. amazing. Uh, you know, having you on our very first Facebook Live, you know, so you, you've you been uh, the, the trendsetter here and we're going to try to do more. We want to bring more of our impact partners uh, on, on, onto our community so that uh, our customers and, and our partners can get to see the, the people that we're working with. Because, you know, you, J Josiah, New York City Relief, you're the guys who are actually doing the work, right? We, we're selling cookies and, and doing all that stuff. But when it comes to really making the difference, that final mile, it's organizations like you. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing. And any last words you want to share? Oh, just just thank you. I mean, to the unbelievable community. Um, like I said, we are we would not exist without partnership. We are a, a collaborative organization, and it is folks like you um, who are able who, who make it possible. Uh, for us to show up and so and just so you know, I hope it's obvious, but we love what we do We love that we get to do this work. Uh, it is not a burden. It is not uh, a headache It is not something that we take for granted uh, We love uh, what we do because we get to meet incredible people and we get to see incredible strength and resolve um, Just every day so but that would not be possible without uh, your community. So thank you to everybody uh, who's who's buying unbelievable cookies and, and trying to make the world a little bit sweeter. Thank you so much. And with that, folks, for me, my time is up. It's time to enjoy a nice unbelievable cookie. Next time, just uh, make sure you bring your cookies as well so that you can enjoy your cookies. Right? Well, actually, in fact, I do have a shipment coming your way. Yes. So you, you're going to have some cookies. But anyway, guys, have a wonderful day and enjoy an unbelievable cookie. Have a good day, guys.